Good morning. It is 10, actually I'm two minutes late. It is 10.02 on Saturday, September 5th. And I pray that your day is off to a wonderful start. Wanted to come in and talk about a mental health series that I'd like to do. Who's in your circle? I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, but um, well, actually last week um, I mentioned it and um, I actually thought about it. Uh, uh, when I looked at Chadwick Bosman and they were talking about how um, those that were in his circle did not betray his confidence and they kept his business private. And I thought about that and said, wow, who's in our circle? Who are we allowing in our circle to make us better, to make us um, uncomfortable, to uh, um help uh, change our trajectory and influence us. So place that was, that's actually what triggered um, this um, portion of the mental health series that I'd like to go through. Uh, we will be doing this every Saturday. Um, I will be in class um, in about two weeks, so I will miss that Saturday, but I'll do the recording in advance. Hey, Cousin Cheryl. Hey, Bless Bessie and Alicia. Um, so let me start off by saying, um, I know for a fact that many of us struggle to live resilient lives. So my passion is to provide the tools necessary for us to uh, revisit our belief systems. I want to challenge us to abandon unproductive thoughts, um, own our behavior, and I want to celebrate with you as you begin to live your best life, okay? So my... my uh, uh, personal mission statement. And I think that everybody should have their own mission statement because you are your own brand. Just like Nike has its brand. Um, all of these companies, Adidas has their brand. You are your own brand. And so I believe you should have your mission statement. And so my own personal mission statement is, uh, I want to provoke your thoughts. I want to inspire you to own your behavior and I want to challenge you to do better. And so the first letter, P-I-C, it is my call and my duty, my responsibility in this earth to always pick you up, provoking your thoughts, inspiring you, inspiring you to own your behavior and challenging you to do better. That's what I want. Okay. So let's jump right in. This is only going to be about 10 minutes. So bear with me. Um, one thing that I wanted to talk about as it relates to who's in your circle, earlier this week, we uh, talked about it cannot be unless you agree. And we talked about those people um, and those things that we agree with. Amos 3 and 3 says, how can two walk together? How can husband and wife walk together? How can business partners walk together? How can uh, church members walk together unless they are in agreement? Now, there are going to be moments where you, you, you may have to come to a conclusion that we will agree to disagree, but that is still an agreement that you are making. You're saying that we can't see eye to eye on this particular situation or on this particular subject matter, but we are agreeing. We are coming into agreement that we will disagree. That is still an agreement, okay? All right, so that's Amos 3 and 3. The next one I want to just bring to your attention quickly is John 17, um, and I think around the 20th verse. Jesus begins to, uh, uh, he's praying because he knows that he's about to ascend into heaven, and he's praying for the disciples, and he's telling the Father, you know, Lord God, make them one with us. He's saying, just as you and I are one, because if you recall, Jesus says, I always do what I see the Father do. Hi, Kenyana. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. If you recall, um, uh, throughout those Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, um, and of course, you know, you have the synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and then you've got, you know, John, which was a little bit different, but John still uh, 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 tells about Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's just that Matthew, Mark, and Luke, those things, they were close, 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 close in um, their, um, uh, 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 oh, what's the word? Help me, Holy Spirit. Um, in their um, interpretations, in their um, perceptions around what they saw and was going on with Jesus. With John, you'll see there's just a little slightly different, uh, some of the things that John covers, uh, 
uh, in the detail that he covers them, the way that they cover, he covers them may not necessarily be um, the same that you see in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but, ne uh, uh, but that's neither here nor there. So let me say that um, I was telling you that, that Jesus talks about how he and the Father are one. What he's saying is, I'm in agreement with the Father. So I can't deviate from what I see the Father do. I've got to maintain the course, and my behavior has to coincide and be representative of what I see the Father do. It goes back to, um, 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 oh, I got too much on my mind. I'm so excited. Anyway. Um, so, so he's saying, I've got to be in alignment. I've got to be in agreement with the father. All right. So, so let me jump on and say, what exactly is a circle? Um, a circle is a relationship and I've, I've got some notes here because I'm a rambler y'all. When I get excited, I will jump off course and be like, wait a minute, I just lost my way. So I've got some no notes here to, uh, remain in obedience to God and make sure that you all get the key points. All right, a circle consists of those in which we are connected. Uh, there's some type of possible interdependency there, okay? And so if you look at the diff different types of circles we have, you've got your spouse, you've got your children, your family, you've got lifelong friends, you've got those coworkers and colleagues, you've got a spiritual circle, you've got neighbors and community, you've even got special interest circles, if it's sewing, um, um, if it's if it's drawing, whatever your special special interests are, you've got those that that are you know related to your hobbies, and you've also got those uh, individuals and your circles that maybe do um, uh, that you're paying for service. That person that's keeping the car up, uh, the oil change. Um, that person that's doing your landscaping. That person that is your doctor. These are all people that are part of your circles, and so you've got circles, layers as it relates to your circles. Now, let me say that when it comes to, let's step back to the spouse for a minute and let's talk about what we're introducing into these circles. And I'm just going to use the spouse because um, I think many can relate, but for those that cannot um, consider this from a friend perspective, um, maybe gal, friend, girl, uh, guy, friend, that kind of thing. So, um, when we hide things from our spouse, that births a level and a layer of dysfunction into the relationship, into the circle. And so let's say that the children are doing something. We know that the children shouldn't be doing whatever, and we keep it from the spouse. What you're doing is introducing deception into the relationship, into the marriage, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that because then you know within your spirit that that lie exists last thing you want. Okay. So you want your relationships, you want your circles to be founded on the basis of truth. The minute that you say that now, because you, it's, it's that you and your spouse are agreeing to be one in Christ. And so the minute that you deviate from that one in Christ, I'm going to be one with my spouse. I now introduce this lie into our, um, marriage. It, it, it brings, it brings a whole lot that happens in the spirit. And let me say that our actions are not limited to just the natural realm. When you go back to binding and loosing, and you've uh, seen this in the word, you know, where it's mentioned that God says, what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and what you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He's saying, agree then. What you agree with in the earth I'm going to agree with in heaven what you agree, what you bind, what you don't agree with. I'm not going to agree with in heaven as well. And so we have a lot of power and we don't realize that we have our power through our spoken word. It is through our word and then it is through our actions. And so it starts with a thought, the power to think, the power to speak and the power to act. Those things are always going on. You're thinking, you're speaking and you're acting, okay? And so it, when we talk about faith, um, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So my hoping is in the word because that's where my thoughts are. My hoping is in that word, but that word 
um, faith without, um, um, it goes with, with faiths and works. And so, no, you can't work your way into heaven, but you must be mindful of your actions because your actions should coincide with what you are thinking. Those two should be in agreement. That's why God says, allow your yes to be yes and your no to be no. When you don't allow your yes to be yes and your no to be no, what you do is you have confusion internally. And so you don't want to have that internal confusion. You want your yes to be yes. And that means that your actions are going, going to coincide with a yes. If your no is no, then allow your actions to coincide with a no. So when Christ says, put me on, and he says, I want you to have the mind of Christ, goes back to John 17, when he says, me and my father are one. Me and my father are always in agreement. And so because me and my father are always in agreement, I want you to also be in agreement with us. That's putting on the mind of Christ, okay? All right, so we talked about um, uh, the different types of circles that we have. Uh, let me also say that when we keep things away from our spouse, for example, or when we try and shelter things, um, and sometimes we'll get in cahoots with our children, well, don't tell your daddy, or or um, if, if a gentleman says, well, don't tell your mama this, and it begins to keep secrets, and you don't want to, you got to be mindful about how you're keeping secrets. Also, keep in mind that when you shelter your spouse from having the experience of something that is disappointing, what you're doing is possibly crippling them as well because they don't get to mature in navigating life's tribulations and life's challenges. So, do we want to have to go through trials and tribulations? No, we don't. But we do want to own our behavior and we do want to say, well, honey, you know, just like I told you a couple years ago, how, you know, um, after getting remarried and I introduced just, you know, paying bills, paying $2,000 at a time for this and $1,000, just chunks of money, just taking it and just paying off the debts, which was really just not managing the money properly. I didn't go to God and say, God, how should I handle this particular thing? I took it upon myself and did what I thought was best. And I introduced problems. I introduced further challenges into the family. But God brought us through that. And so I had to own my behavior. I had to own what I did to introduce this into our family environment. And then I had to trust God to make it different. So you must own your behavior because with that behavior is an associated thought. You have to track backwards, okay? All right, let me go in here. One more thing I want you to know. Those people that are in your circle, why are these people in our space? We all have individual needs. And let me say that based on our needs, you have, you know, food, which is your, your, your physical needs. Um, you have a need for uh, sleep. You got to breathe. You got a need even for sex. God says, be fruitful and multiply even in Genesis. So is sex one of those needs that we have? It is. It is. Does the church often talk about this? No, it's hush. It's hush. And so that's actually what leads us to um, fornication and leads us to things that we really should be addressing. Those things that really should not be kept a secret. Sex is a natural need that all of us have. God gave us that desire for sex. Okay. Let me also say um, we've got a need for safety, to feel secure, to love and belong, for friendship. We've got a, a need for esteem, for that confidence, for the sense of achievement and, oh, I want to be respected and valued by others. We've also got a need of self-actualization, which goes back to our creative juices, um, 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 it, it goes back to uh, our ability to accept the facts, how we self-actualize, okay? Um, something else that, 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 uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll wait on that one. So here's what I'm asking you to do, because I'm going to do this over a series and I don't want to just like gorge you with information. Um, but this is part of our mental health series for September. Um, I would like for you to consider over the next seven days, take 15 minutes and I want you to jot down the individuals that are in your circle, those that are closest to you. 
um, and those that are out in the distance. And I want you to assign whether this is a healthy relationship, meaning that it is birthing constructive uh, life and fruit and growth or whether you really know that this is probably an unhealthy relationship. And I want you to consider the details about that relationship and, and how you are managing that relationship, okay? Now, let me say that many of us form triangles. Uh, let's talk about triangles for a minute. And these triangles, uh, when something troubles us, think about that guy or that gal that you will pick up the phone and you'll call when something is troubling you. What we do is we triangulate and we will bring people into the triangle that don't need to be there, that don't need to be there, that don't need to be there. You got to get to the point where you become a mature enough to handle the challenges that come in life where you can pause and say, Spirit of God, what would you have me to do? Or you're able to crosswalk this event that you're going through to the word of God. Now, does that mean that you will not be in, uh, uh, reaching out to um, other spiritual leaders about guidance? No, that's not what it means. It means that there will be moments that you will have to do that. But that should be the exception and it should not be the norm. This should be a conversation that you're always having with God. Good morning, Gail, um, that you are having with God. So be careful how you triangulate. I'll give you a personal example because I'm, you all know, and if you haven't learned by now, I'm very transparent. Um, I'm transparent because the mask uh, uh, enabled me to live lies. And in the lies, I lived an unproductive and an unfruitful life. And so because I want to bear fruit, that means that I have to remove the mask for God to unearth and to excavate, to have that excavation for God to unearth those things in me that, that I don't know and sometimes don't realize that is there. But my mother, give you an example. I can remember going and talking to mom and in my first marriage, especially, and I'd be, man, I'd be going off and he's this and he's that. and he's. <sighs> Mom would kindly say, I think you need to go back and you need to talk to your husband. And it was never what I wanted to hear, but it was what I needed to hear. What mom was saying was, I want you to go back. I want you to develop a level of maturity. I want you to own your behavior. I will not engage in what's happening between the two people to be that third party because I risk doing more harm than good. And I want you to step up because I want your marriage to work. I'm going to bow out of this marriage. I'm going to step out of it. Okay. So don't triangulate. Write down those people that, that are in your space. Um, 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 and, and the relationship that you have with those people, if it's healthy or if it's unhealthy. And this is the last most important thing that I'm going to leave you with that I want you to think about. I want you to think about, are you a part of your own circle? That's the question. Are you a part? Are you a member of your own circle? Or have you checked out of your circle? Here's what I mean. You've checked out of your circle if you're allowing everything and everyone else to dictate what is happening in your life. You have lost your voice. You have lost your position. You have lost your direction in this life. That means that you get up every day and well, not every day, but that means you get up many days and you say, where'd I come from? You say, why am I here? You say, what's, what's, I don't know what's right and wrong anymore. I, I, I don't know what's right and wrong. And you say, I got to leave here. Where am I going? What am I leaving behind? Have you checked out of your own circle? This is the question I want you to ponder, that I need you to ponder. Okay. All right, we're going to end in prayer, and I want you all to slay the day, obey, and walk in the way. You hear me? I need that t-shirt. Who's the t-shirt maker? I need that t-shirt. All right, spirit of the living God, we thank you and we praise you for this, this moment to pause and be reflective and to think about you. Lord God, you know, we know that when we go into the churches, we know that when we read our Bible, it's all about you and the word. But God, there's also a mental portion, a mental health portion 
that you want us to focus on, that you want us to concentrate on. Yes, we get our spiritual food, but yes, we must also have the mental food that helps us to become better. The two work together. You are washing us with your word, oh God, but washing us with your word, you told us to also get understanding. So we get understanding through understanding our mental state, where we are, where we've been, but most importantly, where you are trying to take us. We thank you, oh God, that, that you're not a God that is limited to yesterday, that you're not a God that is limited to tomorrow, that you're not a God that is limited to today, because here's what you say. You say that I am an eternal God and I am in the present every, 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 every second. You say that I'm not even limited to your second because when you say that it's a second, you say that I'm limited by time. So Lord God, you are a forever present. You are a forever presence. You are not boxed in by the boundary of time, nor are you limited by time, oh God, but you gave us time to help us manage and to navigate our day and to manage and to navigate our assignment and our purpose and our call in this earth. We look to step into that as we go through the series. I ask you in the name of Jesus for any woman that may not realize the, the chains or the bondage or the confusion or the doubt or anything that she's wrestling with because of the things and the people that are in her circle. I ask you now in the name of Jesus to bring revelation to her. I ask you to strengthen her, O oh God, and endue her with a deeper depth of your power and the authority that you said that you left to her. Remind her of who she is, an ambassador, an ambassador, oh God, an ambassador in this earth representing you and remind her that she is more than equipped to do and to fulfill the purpose and the call. But I hear her. I don't know why I'm here. I hear her. I don't know my purpose. I hear her. I've just given up and I, I, I just don't know where to start. Lord God, help her to start today. Help her to stay the course, not only start, but help her to stay the course as she resides in you. In Jesus' name, we thank you for opening up the portals and the gates of heaven. We thank you, O oh God, that we are able to receive and that we walk under the blood covering of Jesus Christ for those women that may have abandoned the course. I ask you, O oh God, to draw them back to you, that they in this moment will confess and repent and say, Spirit of God, I know that I need you in my life. I can't change what I did last night. I can't change what I did yesterday or the day before. But she surrenders to you and say, but God, I ask you now to be the head of my life. I ask you to take over every aspect of my life and strengthen me as I live a life of surrender and obedience to you. In Jesus' holy and righteous and powerful name, I give you glory. We give you glory. Amen. 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 Ladies, do your thing. Do your thing. I can't wait. I'm looking for an interactive se session next Saturday and I can't wait. We're going to add on to what you write down. Make sure you got it in your phone. Make sure you've got it somewhere. Jot it down. But we are going to add on to that list. Remember, you are looking at your relationships. You are identifying those individuals in your relationships, whether it's healthy, whether it's unhealthy, and put some criteria around what makes it healthy, un unhealthy. Okay. I love y'all. Kenyana, I know that you are getting married next Saturday. And I plead the blood of Jesus on your marriage. I'm believing God that he is going to draw you and your husband, soon to be husband, closer to him, that you all will bear witness of his glory. And for every woman on here that is believing God for a wonderful husband, for a wonderful husband, know that the man is coming. Know that the man is on his way. But it goes back to where you are in Christ. Sometimes God is saying, I want to know that you're consistently for me and God has to know that you're consistently for him because the things that the man is going to do, you're going to have to pray him through it. So you can't abandon your relationship with Christ, who is your first husband, girl. You're going to need Christ. You're going to need the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to pray that man, to pray the marriage, to pray the purpose that will abide in the marriage and will dwell in the relationship. Y'all, go ahead. 
Do your thing. I praise God for you. And I can't wait to see what God is going to do through this series. In Jesus name, do your thing. I love y'all. Bye.